Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jower Gator 8, a new college football video drops. In this video, we'll talk about a bizarre incident that happened at a bowl game during the 2002 season. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. Mike freaking McCarthy! How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Seriously! How many times is McCarthy going to do this? How is he so bad at quite literally every in-game management aspect of coaching a game? This is the fifth, count him, the fifth time he's been on dumb decisions in just three seasons with the Cowboys. He's the inaugural member of the Five Timers Club. And yet, as bad as every other decision he made that got him on this segment was, from his pointless timeout against the Patriots in 2021, to his fourth down call in overtime against the Packers in 2022, to his terrible coaching decisions on Thanksgiving against the football team in 2020, to one of the dumbest fourth down calls and non-challenges I've ever seen against the Eagles in 2022, this might be the worst of them all, just because of the stakes. It genuinely amazes me how Annette McCarthy has been at the worst possible times. And man, was that the case in this game against the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round. No long intro, no explanation of what was happening beforehand, let's just dive straight into the madness that I think we're all still trying to process, and will be for quite some time. It's January 22nd, 2023, and the Dallas Cowboys are playing their arch-rival, the San Francisco 49ers, for a spot in the NFC Championship. Winner keeps their season alive, and the loser goes home. Now, it's do or die time for the Cowboys, as they trail by 7 points with under 3 minutes to go. If you can't get something going here, while it's not necessarily the ball game, your odds of winning this one drop pretty drastically. First down, and Jesus Christ, Dak, what the heck are you doing? Seriously, you've already thrown two picks today, and that could have easily been the third and a pick six to end the ball game. Second down, and well, you missed that throw. Had Gallup too. What a shame. Third down, and oh my goodness, Dak, how do you take a sack there? Do you not know the situation? God, that was such a terrible game for him on so many levels, and about the least clutch drive at the worst possible time. Alright, so you've got 4th and 10. Obviously, you're punting the ball here, because this is way too many yards to get on one play against this defense, and you're way too far back where if you don't get it, the Niners are starting in field goal range with a kicker that's hit 100% of his field goals in the playoffs, so it's game over. But ideally, you want to get this punt off quickly. Ideally, you want to punt this ball right away so that you have as much time as possible, especially since you have three timeouts and the two-minute warning to give it back to your offense and let them have a chance to do their thing. With 2.44 left, Prescott got sacked. Ideally, you can get the punt unit out there and punt this one off about 15 seconds later. Ideally, you can get this ball off with 2.29 or so left. And then, you can force the 49ers to run three plays on the right side of the two-minute warning. Ideally, you can punt the ball with... They've got to get lined up, and now they got to snap it. They're oh. wasting a ton of time. No question. Oh, come on! How is the clock still running? Why are you not getting this punt off? Why are you not ready to go? How are you so bad at mismanaging the clock? How are you letting all this time wind down and doing absolutely nothing about it? How, Mike McCarthy? How? Anger. McLeod calls fair catch. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy. I've got nothing left at this point. I'm sorry, I've truly got nothing. The sad part about the Cowboys is that this is a very talented team, but it seems like every time they lose a game, you can pin a good portion of the blame on something specific that McCarthy did or did not do. And somehow, for a variety of reasons, this might have been his worst coach game, which is saying a ton 
because he's had quite a few stinkers over the years. But this was that bad. So with that being said, let's look at why not calling the punt right away, and instead letting the clock run down all the way to 2.11, with 9 seconds left on the play clock before calling the punt, is a horrible idea. And before we begin, I want to emphasize that I have no problem whatsoever with punting the football here. None at all. It's exactly what I would have done. Punting the ball on 4th and 10, and giving your team a chance to get it back with plenty of time left, is better than going for it, and risking the fail first down, and therefore, giving up the game, since the Niners would already be in field goal range. The problem with this play entirely comes with the clock management. When you have the ball, even if you're on special teams, you need to be aware of the clock and treat it with a sense of urgency when you're trailing. That means you have to get this punt off right away. You need to have your punt team on the sideline ready to go and ready to take the field just in case something terrible happens on third down. I don't want to say it's a fire drill scenario, but it's awfully similar. If you get the punt team out there and you theoretically get the punt off with about 229 left, Let's say the punt takes 6 seconds, since that's what it took in actuality. You have 3 timeouts and a 2 minute warning to work with. And now, you've got 2.23 left. If you force a 3 and out on that spot, since the average play takes about 6 seconds, you can get the ball back with about 2 minutes left. And you would have a timeout to work with too, since you don't need to burn all 3 since you have the 2 minute warning. However, by taking your time, you eliminate that option. For some perspective, if everything stayed exactly the same in terms of the play calls, with the Niners running 5 plays on the ensuing drive, if you got the punt off with 2.29 left like a well-prepared team would've, then when you add up the 3 timeouts and the 2 minute warning, you're getting the ball back with about 1.10 left on the clock. However, because of this terrible clock management, you only got it back with 45 seconds left. The difference in that is 25 seconds or about four full plays. You just cost yourself four additional chances to reach the end zone, which is a big deal when you have to go that far. I've used the lottery ticket analogy so often on this channel, but why not buy 10 tickets if it costs exactly the same amount of money to buy six tickets? There's no reason not to. And yet, McCarthy did not do that. I've talked about bad clock management so many times this season with coaches just deciding to let the clock run for no reason. Heck, it happened last week in the wildcard round with John Harbaugh and the Ravens, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But this is up there, considering the circumstances and the stakes at hand, with being one of the worst defenders of that. Just sickening how bad coaches have been with the clock on the whole this entire season. So what do we learn from all this? If you're losing, the clock is your enemy, not your friend and you need to be in the appropriate mindset to get plays off quickly and give yourself as much time as possible to get the ball back. Letting the play clock run while the game clock is running and while you're losing will always be a bad idea this late in the game, but especially in the case of a punt. And if you have the chance to get the ball back with more time and therefore more chances to call plays and move down the field, don't pass on that chance for no reason whatsoever, especially if the play you're calling is just giving possession back to the other team anyways. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb dis- wait, 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 hold on. My producer's telling me something. Oh, come on, can't it wait like five seconds? I was literally in the middle of the final sentence in the wrap-up. Wait a second, wait a second, time out. No, 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 that, that can't possibly be. You're telling me that wasn't the dumb decision I was supposed to break down? You're telling me that I broke down the wrong play? How? What do you mean I broke down the wrong play? There couldn't possibly have been a play worse than that. That was some of the worst clock management of the season at the worst possible time. What could have possibly been worse than that? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 oh, oh no. Oh god, no. Mike McCarthy, go fuck! Final play, it looks like barring a penalty. Prescott over the middle of the turpin. Gets smoked right away! I'm sorry, what?! Alright, there's about 20,000 things to dissect with this play. So let's get right to it. First off, there's 6 seconds left. That's enough time to call an out route to the sideline, pick up a few more yards, and get closer that way. At the end of the day, 
you're not having more than two plays no matter what, as you've only got six seconds left. And since the downs are irrelevant, since it's third down and you've only got time for two plays, why not take an opportunity to get potentially closer and make your life a little bit easier? I know you tried that on the Dolan Schultz route on the previous play, where he couldn't get his feet in bounds because he was being incredibly careless. But even if it's just 10 yards, what do you have to lose? That's 10 yards you didn't have before, and that you don't have to go on the final play. If I give you the option to try a shot in soccer from 40 yards out, or a shot from 30 yards out, obviously, your odds aren't great either way. But you're probably taking the 30-yard option over the 40-yard option, which makes sense. But the Cowboys didn't do that! Screw the extra play! We're calling our last-ditch play right now! Even though the 49ers called timeout to get ready for this play, so we're not exactly catching them off guard. Yeah, that's the other thing among many that was confusing about this play that the Cowboys did not need to call at that specific time. The 49ers were ready for this bizarre formation. See, if you wanted to run this crazy, wackadoo play with six seconds left, you could have lined up in a regular formation with the out route in mind, and snapped the ball and call an out route. And then, if the Niners called the timeout to calm themselves and figure out how you were lining up, since you can't call two in a row, you then hit them with this formation and throw them completely off. But you're giving them a chance to prepare for it when you don't have to. And then, you line up and do the exact same thing. It's like giving students the answers to the test before they take the test. It truly makes no sense why not only you would line up with this play, but that you would do it after the Niners call the timeout because they saw you in that formation. It's incredibly reminiscent of that awful fake field goal attempt by Jim Zorn in that Monday Night Football game between Washington and New York, where the Giants knew what was coming because they literally saw it before and they called timeout. Brilliant coaching right there. And look, I'm not naive. I'm not stupid. You had to go 76 yards just to have a shot at tying the game. The odds were incredibly slim. But genuinely, how was this play supposed to work? So you throw the ball on the slant route, and I'm assuming it's a hook and ladder of some kind. You got the hook down, but where's the ladder? Look at where everyone is when the ball is caught. No one's even remotely close to being able to get the ball on a lateral. Was Dak Prescott supposed to run over and get the lateral after he threw it? That seems kind of stupid, seeing as he's going to get pressured and might not be upright, since you have one offensive lineman, and it's Ezekiel Elliott, who unsurprisingly got pancaked, seeing as he's not an offensive lineman, and has never snapped the football in his life. Plus, by having Zeke snap the ball, you know he's going to go to the ground, so his speed is negated by the fact that he can't do anything because he's on the ground. At least if you put a tight end at center, you might have a shot at keeping the tight end upright and using him on the play. But it genuinely seems like the closest guy who had any shot at the lateral attempt is Prescott, unless the plan was to have Turpin catch the ball and then throw it behind his back to number 16, T.Y. Hilden, and then Hilden might have a convoy of two blockers to have a shot. I genuinely don't know what the design here was. This is the first fail hook and ladder attempt that I've ever seen, where I genuinely have no idea what the ladder was supposed to be. I've got nothing. Really, I'm speechless. After the game, McCarthy, understandably, was asked about whatever the heck that final play was. And his response was, it didn't get going. That obviously wasn't the plan. But here's what I don't get about that statement, other than the fact that that was super obvious. It would be one thing if the play got busted, because Prescott made a bad throw, or took too long to throw it, or the receiver bobbled the ball and couldn't field it cleanly, or the lateral attempt was off. It would be one thing if the play got busted because the execution was bad. But I'm genuinely wondering what the plan was, and what McCarthy thought was going to happen, because none of this is on the players. Prescott threw the pass quickly and on target, and it was caught, and then the game ended. Let's say I want to go to a game with my friends, and the plan is to meet at my house and take my car. And then, as we're driving to the game, the car breaks down. I can safely say that wasn't the plan. But in that same scenario, if we meet at my house and take my car, and then as we're about to leave, I realize that, oh crap, I don't own a car. I can't really say that wasn't the plan. 
The design of the plan was so horribly wrong that the only way I could have seen this play working is if Mike McCarthy was approached by Doctor Strange before the game and was told that one of his players had the ability to teleport. I've seen some bad final plays before, and trust me, we're going to cover one on this channel in the offseason that is a million times worse than this from the 70s that you probably have never seen before, so stay tuned for that. But I don't think I've ever seen a funnier final play than this. Literally, I don't know what the plan was. If ever the phrase, moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that this has no chance of possibly working, applies, it's this play right here. This is the textbook definition. So what do we learn from all this? What we learned is that I need a vacation after the season is done. Because my god, these coaches are pushing me to my breaking point. And oh yeah, if you're designing a final play, don't do this. Just don't do that. Do literally anything else. Having all your players line up on the line of scrimmage, sitting crisscross applesauce, would be a more successful play design than whatever the heck this was. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gary 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.